Today is definitely one of the more deceiving days so far this year. It's very sunny. This greenhouse is actually quite hot. So we've took that fleece off just to give them a bit of natural sunlight. And obviously we don't want them getting too hot, if that's even possible. Don't be deceived though, because although it's like this right now, tonight is that minus five night. So you're gonna need that fleece on all your plants. So please, if you've not already done it, get the fleece out or take your plants indoors. Because if you don't do one or the other at minus five, you're probably gonna lose most of your plants. The only things that can stand temperatures of minus five are things like evergreens, but definitely not young seedlings. So make sure you do something tonight. And although that weather is like it is, we've still got things we're doing in greenhouse. What I'm doing at the moment is I'm preparing all my potatoes ready for planting. And although it does seem a long way off, you need to chip your potatoes before you plant them out. Or plant them in containers. So that's what we're doing. I've already started some off indoors. That's what you need to be doing them, not outside. And we've got some of these weird looking things. This is called pink fir apple. And you can see it's starting to get a chit on top. That's what we're looking for. A nice purpley or green coloured one. If they're white, they're no good. And then we've got some here with smaller chits on them. But you can also see there's some coming at bottom as well. So we've got these done. I don't need to label them because they're quite obvious what they are. But we also need to get all the rest done as well. Because I'm going to be planting out all my potatoes in mid-April hopefully so we've got a few weeks to get some chits started so when you start your chits you want them indoors not too hot just an unused room is perfectly fine that's not heated so basically anywhere frost free and make sure they get a good amount of light then you'll get really good healthy chits and that basically means that your potatoes are starting to grow those potato plants before you even put them in your compost. And that's what we do it for. And I've got quite a few different types. So, I need to be going through them because when they come, they're in these bags. And those bags are dark, which is no good. Otherwise, you end up with these white chits. And we don't want those. They'll make weak plants. So those little white ones, I'll just take them off. I'll leave that top one because it has got a bit of colour to it. And then we'll pop them in these trays. Chit side up like that. So we know that they're definitely getting plenty of light. And the same with this one. That chit's got a little bit of colour on it. But around it, there's some littler ones. White ones. We don't want those ones. Get rid of those. Just leave yourself a nice, healthy looking chip. And again, drop it into your tray. That way it can stay upright without the risk of it rolling around and breaking that chit off as you're trying to grow it. These ones are called Carlos. And again, that's a really good chit, that one. Tiny one on edge, get rid tiny one there, get rid. And because that's such a good chip, and I know there's another train to come at the bottom, I'm also gonna take that off. So I'm only left with one. Because each chip is gonna grow into a potato plant stem and fill up with leaves. And if you get too many growing out of your compost from just one seed potato, it's gonna be making more green foliage than it is actual potatoes. So as a rule, I have two chits per potato and that's maximum. So it's very simple to do. Pick them out, select your best chit or two 
pop them into your tray. Then you can pop them back indoors. If you get chits that aren't on top and even right down as low as this, don't worry about those. They'll grow perfectly fine. As these grow, what they'll do is they'll turn and they'll start growing upwards. So they're still good if you haven't got any on top. That one's got three on it. So in that situation, I'll just take away that side one and just leave those top two. And exact same with this one. One white chip on the side and a little one there, but quite a decent one on top. Keep that. And that's them done. And then make sure that you label them. If for nothing else, you might have some that's first earlies, some that's second earlies, and some that's main crops. So you need to be planting those at the right time. So that's them done. And we've got one job done at least today. And then do exactly the same with all the rest of your potatoes. I bought six of each seed because I'm only putting these in containers anyway. But I don't have to keep coming back and forth to camera. You can see what I'm doing, taking away white chits and keeping the healthier looking ones. And it takes minutes to sort out. This one's got five growing on it, which is way too many. So we're taking all them off, except those top two. And the same again five growing, remove any that look white. And even if you only end up with one decent one on top, it's enough to get your plant started. It's another set done. And they're called Amor. And then I've got some called Picasso. And these are a good example for what you don't want. Stems like that, all white and getting long and spindly. They're no good. They're gonna make bad plants. And you can also see what I was talking about. Even though they're growing at the bottom, they're trying to curl up, which is what they do if you bury them in compost. Even that one, as low as that. But we don't want these because they're white. So just take them off, get rid. And we'll leave these because they're very small, stubby little ones. And although they are white in colour, they've only just started growing. So, now we've got them in a bit of light, they should start to colour up and they'll be alright. And it was actually quite cold this morning, so that coffee was very much appreciated, Kenneth. Thank you for that. And we've got one more bag left. My favourite ones. And these are Sarpos. A main crop potato, but a very high yielding one as well. And I've never been able to get hold of these in the past, but we went to a farmer's market a month or so ago and they just happened to have some. So I thought we've got to get some of these Sarpos. Because if you look up Sarpo potatoes on YouTube, you'll see a few channels that's grown them in containers. And they get a lot of potatoes out of one 30 litre container. And they're also a very good size. And this one's got three chits growing on it. But, same as before, any that looks spindly and weak, I will be removing. So a couple of what we're growing this year. The second earlies, and then the rest of main crops. I didn't bother with first earlies this year. Because you only end up with little potatoes. And the weather has been so shocking. I do like to start those early. But the weather's just not been fit this year, so we thought we'll skip those and we'll wait to do a second early, which we've already got growing. And that's all my potatoes set up for the year.
So we've got a couple the second earlies at the moment. And we've got some main crops as well. And considering that these are all going in containers, we should still get a really good harvest by end of season. And maybe over the next couple of weeks, if I see any more going cheap, as sometimes they do when it gets to a certain point a year, I might buy an extra couple of bags. Or I might even do what I did last year, and that's just take one from fridge that's been supermarket bought and just pop that into a container to see what we get. Because they do say if you're buying from a supermarket and use them as seed potatoes, they won't work. That's not 100% true. It just depends on whether whoever produced that potato sprayed the plant with what they call inhibitors, which means that that potato can't regrow into a new plant. But if you take a couple of potatoes out of your fridge, put them in your room, same as you would these in a tray, if they start to grow chits on top, then they will work. So maybe we'll try that experiment again this year as well. The only downside to that is you're not quite sure what type of potato you're planting, but a potato's a potato. So we're all set up now. These are all going back indoors and we know why. A couple of weeks ago, I put a couple of second earlies into an old compost bag to see how they get on. And it has been really cold as we all know. So you're not expecting a deal or anything. But we have got a little bit of summer happening. I'll show you. So this is that potato planter that we did. An homemade box that we made from a free pallet. And then we spaced the bottom slats out a little bit so we get good drainage. But what we did is we put an old compost bag inside it. Wrapped it all around with bubble wrap to get some protection from cold. The potatoes are quite susceptible to cold. They can't stand frost. If they get any foliage growing and then we get a frost, then the plants turn black and they have to start all over again. So that's why we've put it in a container, wrapped the entire thing in bubble wrap for that extra layer of protection. Plus it's in one of these bags and the inside of the bag's black. So that's gonna absorb a bit of heat through the day. But, We've left it alone to see what happens. And right there, we've got the start of a little potato plant coming. But because they're so tiny and we've got frost coming, I'm just gonna bury them again. We don't want to run risk at anything damaging these plants. And I think for today, I'm also gonna cover it up completely like that, put a plant pot on top, maybe an extra layer of bubble wrap as well, just so I know no frost is going to get in there and ruin those plants that we've already got started. So once again we've got something done and it's really encouraging to see that plant is trying to grow even in this horrible weather that we've been having for the last few weeks. So we'll take all these back indoors, get some nice elfy looking chits growing on them ready to be brought back out when this weather does improve and we'll get them all set up in containers and then we'll wait for a second early harvest which should be around about July time and then the main crops which will come much later in the year somewhere around October but for now we're all set up and we're on this way and if that's all we can do at the moment at least it's something rather than nothing and just before I go, thank you very much to Sheila Thomas once again for your kind donation. Maybe at the weekend I'll pop out and get a few more bags of compost to keep me stocked up. Because when spring does arrive, we're going to have a lot of containers to fill. So thank you very much for that, Sheila. It's going to come in very useful. If you're not already subscribed to this channel and you're interested in seeing what other things we're going to be sowing and growing throughout the season, then please hit that subscribe button and press that notifications bell and we'll see you at next upload. Take care.